Weight inverted rows may just be one of the best upper back exercises of all time. This video will make a strong case for emphasizing them. I'll first mention that the unweighted version is probably fine for most of you right now, but there will come a point where even the hardest variations where the body angles are like this will get too easy to the point where almost exclusively higher reps are performed. Three sets of 15 to 20, or even being in the 20 to 30 zone. And truth be told, there's nothing wrong with that, but what does that typically lead to? Treating this exercise as a finisher, or high frequency, grease in the groove strategy, just pumping blood into the muscle. Great for shoulder health, keeping your posture in check, but it's not really the best mass builder at this point your barbell rows, dumbbell rows, cable rows, that which allows you to stick to more traditional rep ranges is probably gonna be most conducive or at least more efficient. Not saying you won't grow with the super high rest, but let's keep it real. The inverter row does not become a main builder at this point. It's purely an accessory done to finish things off. Whereas adding weights puts you back where you're supposed to be. It enables the most simple methods of progressive overload in a way that's easy to track, not complicated. You can go to failure or very close to it. And there'll be very little detriments, not only to your upper back gains, but also performance for weight training and calisthenics. And this is where things get really juicy. First of all, if you're doing weighted pull-ups or other low rep calisthenics, now you have another arsenal in your toolbox, but it's a serious one. The horizontal movement pattern. Few guys match the intensity for both vertical and horizontal. With this, you can do weighted pull-ups and inverted rows in the exact same session and ensure that everything is perfectly balanced. So you're not gonna be one of those calisthenics dudes that has this very wide back but might be lacking to a certain extent of thickness. Not saying pull-ups don't build that, but the rows do a slightly better job at developing the entire trapezius, rhomboids, rear delts, etc. So it matters depending where you position your body angle. Not to mention the fact that it'll greatly complement your push-ups, or if you're someone who does a tremendous amount of benching or much horizontal pressing, which is the norm, by the way, this'll put you back to where you're supposed to be, where you probably won't have to double the volume of your rows because the intensity is being matched in that way. Now you can do five by five, three sets of six to eight, reps of 10. You unlock a lot more rep ranges and it becomes a simple game of increasing the challenges over time, like any other exercise that has served you so well up until this point. If your starting point is 25 pounds and you build up to doing 90 pounds on the exercise, which is realistic, by the way, what do you think that's gonna do to your upper back gains? They're going to explode, but without any negative side effects. Because another important feature is the lack of lower back loading. The stimulus to fatigue ratio for this movement is absolutely incredible. You will not feel beat down, yet all the musculature will be correctly stimulated. So if you did heavy deadlifts earlier in the session or the day before, the spinal erectors will no longer be a problem. And this can certainly be an issue as you get stronger at your barbell rows. If you're in the mid 200s, that extra loading absolutely adds up. It's why many people gravitate towards cables or doing chest supported dumbbell rows. With this, that's no longer a problem. You have the exact same body angle. We're going heavy, the strength curve is similar, and the upper back strength and development will be almost identical. Some would say even better though, because it's a closed chain exercise. You're moving your body through space. What do we know about this? It tends to have better carryover to free weighted exercises than the other way around. In other words, if you get very strong at weighted pull-ups, you can easily go to a commercial gym and damn near max out the lat pull-down machine. First attempt, I can promise you that you're gonna be hitting some extreme weights. Whereas if you did it the other way around, specialize in lat pull-downs for a long time and then decide to start doing pull-ups, you might not even have the strength to do 45 to 90 pounds. That's because of the nature of the movements. Pulling an object towards you versus you pulling yourself with external resistance. For some reason, when you move your body through space, it tends to have greater carryover. So 
That's why I'm saying there's no detriments. If you get strong at your inverted rows and you're still doing your deadlifts, good mornings, isolating lower back, etc., you can come in and hit extreme numbers on the barbell row. You're not going to get weaker and the carryover to the other poles will be fine too. In fact, we can say because there's so little stress in lower back that we can do even more volume and possibly get even better hypertrophy results without the cheating because that's what happens when you do many standing up rows. This is harder to cheat on. You can use a little bit of momentum by shifting the hips up, but the cheating will not occur to the same degree. You can't use as much momentum from your posterior chain. So not only the benefits to weight training, but also calisthenics as a whole because it is weighted calisthenics. That means weighted inverted rows will help your weighted pull-ups. Weighted inverted rows will help your front lever. Weighted inverted rows are going to help every single calisthenics movement on a bar or ring that requires a lot of upper back strength. Fact, every single time, because strength is strength. And we're training the more specific way in this regard. So why wouldn't you do the exercise if we know it's gonna help you as a lifter and a calisthenics athlete? Talk about win-win. All right, guys, those are the main benefits. Now I wanna talk about the execution. First of all, I highly recommend elevating your feet. You wanna be in a horizontal angle. So your foot should not be that much higher than your head. Otherwise, you're gonna be like this, which is actually harder, and it will hit the upper traps a little bit more, but we wanna be in a traditional rowing position. And if you go below that, now you're turning to a row pull-up hybrid. Again, nothing wrong with it, but we want the purest form for the best strength curve and to treat that as our fundamental progressive overload builder. In regards to the arm bend, you don't have to touch your chest. That's like saying it's mandatory to do sternum pull-ups in order to get jacked from vertical pulls. Simply pull until you're squeezed out. That might be a few inches away from your chest. Lastly, in regards to loading, it depends what your experience level is at, but a good starting point would be laying an ankle weight flat on your chest. 10 pounds, get good at those, add another 10 pounder. But obviously 20 is not gonna serve you very long, so in that case, a weighted vest or backpack is optimal. I've seen some guys do the exercise with chains and I find that extremely awkward. They're gonna shift around everywhere and depending on the length as well, it might end up distorting the strength curve as well. So I don't recommend that one whatsoever. It's not safe. It's not efficient loading either. You will be limited to a certain extent, but you can absolutely place those in the backpack, which probably makes a lot of sense. And that's what I do, as weird as that setup may appear, but it's certainly relatable and you guys can get started immediately. Now you may think that by wearing this thing, it's restricting the range of motion, but that's just the poofy part of the backpack. And when you pull yourself to the bar, you'll actually go through that. So if anything, it maximizes the mind muscle connection, really not a con whatsoever. Plus, I already said that you don't have to go chest to bar. So even if it was a partially restricted range of motion, that doesn't matter in the first place. An inverted row is usually not going to be this for most people. So I found that to be the most efficient setup. You can easily load up 45 to 90 pounds. And for 90% of you, that's probably enough. So that's the easiest way to set it up if you don't have anything right now. Otherwise, uh, a weighted vest is definitely on point. I'd love to get one that's play loaded or just a regular vest, doesn't matter. For me, it's really about safety while being able to lift the heaviest amount of weight. Alternatively, you can put a plate on your chest, but that's gonna shift around a bit, so I don't really recommend that. So. If you really insist, like wrap it around your chest using some knee wraps. I've seen some guys do that with great success and uh, more power to them, but I don't have knee wraps and I'm sure a lot of you don't either. And I'm not gonna tell you to buy those when you could just use the backpack. And then if you do wanna go to the next level, we'll just get a good weighted vest, which is gonna be more comfortable to begin with. So those are the ways of loading it. And if you're really concerned about the range of motion, which I already express should not be a concern, do the exercise with gymnastic rings. Yet another amazing variation, by the way, because now we're pulling in a more natural movement and you can manipulate the body angles to hit certain parts slightly differently. So this unlocks a lot of options that will keep you training hard for many months to come. You won't suffer overuse problems in this way. So the ring version is excellent and some would say it's even better than doing it off a barbell or a smith machine, whatever you may be suspending yourself off. 
And with that said, there's not much else to say. It's a very simple exercise, horizontal pull, standard strength curve, easy on recovery, can be loaded with exceptionally heavy weights, no negatives to your strength and size gains. Why would you not do some weighted inverted rows? So prepare for insane upper back results. Let me know how you like this exercise and I'll talk to you all next time.